Good evening. Welcome to St. John Youths. Today is the third Sunday of Easter, and our presider this evening is Father Ethan. Let us go ahead and stand and join our voices in singing our opening song, He is Exalted. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. So we are celebrating uh, the third Sunday of Easter, so the resurrection, we're continuing to celebrate that great celebration of, of life, of new life in Christ, and in a special way tonight, we also have uh, first communions, and so we're celebrating some first communions for our adults in our sacramental classes. So we're so grateful for you and welcome to your families and friends who are joining us. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Father Ethan and I'm the pastor here at St. John Youths. And in this season of Easter, in this new life that God has given us, we're grateful, but sometimes we fail to express the gratitude. Sometimes we fail to live that life. And so for the times that we have been short, the times that we've had bad thoughts, the times that maybe we haven't been kind, uh, let us once again renew ourselves and ask God for his mercy as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God. 
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sins, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation of our sins, and not for our sins, only but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word, the word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Why they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you had anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. To all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord.
I'm curious, does anyone here make their own wine or beer? Do we have any brewers or? Raise your hand nice and high so I can see. Um, anybody brew their own brew? Make your own wine? Nobody? Okay, good. We got somebody. Tell me, what do you, what do, you do? What do you make? Not wine, not beer, but whiskey. Not wine and not beer, but whiskey? Whiskey. So really? Like a, an American blend. Yeah. Really? Here, hang on to this. I want to hear more. Tell me about it. Well, so, uh, you know, I started watching those shows and then one after. Wait, which shows? Uh, there's like a, um, a distillery show on, on making your own whiskey. So I thought oh. it was interesting. I'm, I'm like, well, heck. Let me give it a shot. Yeah. See what, what, how I could do it. And uh, so for a Christmas gift one year, uh, some, some guys from my work gave me a, a, a still pot and stuff like that. And so I uh, put it all together. And one evening I started to brew it. And when it finally comes out, the white lightning, it is like, it, it, it's a blessing from God too, man. It's one of the greatest things that I've ever really? felt in my entire life. It's like one of my three boys being born here. But, but not as good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll introduce all uh, three boys. That we've, we've got the Booze Brothers. i got Guinness, Jameson, and Tennyson here. Okay. Awesome. Well, so why is this the first I'm hearing that you make your own whiskey? Well, I don't you do know, it Christmas all the time. You know, Christmas wasn't that long ago, right? <laughs> well, everybody's invited. Okay, very Come good. Come on over. Okay, so tell me, but so when you're distilling or you're, you're making the, the whiskey, like what goes through it? Like what's the process? What, what do you make it out of? I make it out of sugar. So it's a sugar base, water. Um, that you got to have a, um, what's it called? A, uh, I forget the other stuff you throw in there, but it's a simple mix. Yeah. Um, and then you heat it for uh, however many hours. And then next thing you know, after seven days, you got to yeah. wait seven days. Um, and then after seven days of it burning in the, in the pot, it will uh, finally come out. The spirit will come out. And, uh, yeah, it's white lightning. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. We'll have to have a little party here sometime. <laughs> You're all invited. <laughs> so, um, all right, so we got whiskey. I think there uh, – anybody else? Does anybody make their own whiskey or make your own wine or – Beer? Looking? Okay. How about uh, bread? Does anybody bake your own bread? Anybody bake your own bread? Nobody? We got... Oh! All right. So tell us, have you made your own whiskey before? No. Okay. That I haven't done. <laughs> so tell us what happens... Why don't you stand up? I, just so everybody can see you. Okay. How, so how, what goes into baking your own bread? What are the ingredients? So I do a sourdough. Okay. So it, it takes a while for the starter to ferment. So What's in a starter? It's really basic. It's just yeast, flour, and water. And okay. it's a matter of giving that, those three ingredients time to do their interaction between each other. So the yeast is a living organism. It gives off oxygen within the, the flour and the water. Uh -huh. And then a little, little bit of sugar. So a little bit of sugar is what feeds the yeast, and the three mm. of them continue to ferment. And once you get to a point after about two weeks, you have an active starter, and then you can incorporate more flour and whatever ingredients you want to go into your bread. Mm. Um, but before you do that, you save some of the starter for your next batch of bread. Very cool. And then what happens after you've got your, I guess it's dough, right? Yeah. What, what do you do with the dough? So the dough then has to rest after you put it through the mixing process and kneading process. It then needs to sit. And then all of the yeast that's activated in there gives off oxygen, which is what gives the bread lightness and air inside of it. So then you bake it. Sometimes the bread will take a double rise, but yeah, mostly it's a single or a double rise. And then you put it in the oven for whatever amount of time for the bread you're making. Cool. Thank you. So you heard about fermentation. Is, there, is that happening in distillery as well? Oh, yeah. You got, you, I forgot. That's the word, yeast. So you got to put the yeast in. So there's yeast in there too? Yep. So there's yeast and you're in feeding there. it with a sugar. And, and that's it. And water. And water? Very basic. Wow. Yeah. Very. This is amazing. And I think this is what we're hearing about in the scriptures today because wine is something similar too, right? There's a Grape juice is, is kind of being transformed into wine. There's a fermentation.
process as well. So there's this, this, the yeast, it's alive. And the yeast is feeding on the sugar. The, the yeast is feeding on, you're not in your head over there. Are you not in your head? Tell, yeah? Are you getting it? Do you make your own bread or anything? No? Okay, I thought you were getting excited. Uh, you're just agreeing. You're getting hungry. So, but, so that's, it's feeding. The yeast is feeding. It's, it's feeding off the sugar. It's feeding off of, of all of this. But it's a living organism. And so that there's a transformation that's happening. And so there's a transformation that's happening in our own lives. So we've got some of our, our um, parishioners here. You're going to receive your first Holy Communion tonight. You guys, anybody want to share? I'm not going to force you to, but what does this mean for you? Would any of you like to share a little bit? Just a word or two? Are you excited? Are you scared? Or why, why would you want to receive your communion? You don't have to. Oh, yeah. You guys want to share? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. So sometimes it can be overwhelming to think about, right? But that's what's happening. So when we receive our, th this communion, so it's going to come from bread, it's going to come from wine. So that transformation process has happened, right? So with, with the grains of wheat, with the grapes, they've been fermented, they've been transformed. And as we heard, there's a heating process, right? Whether it's with the, the distillery or whether it's with the bread, it's been baked, Right? So it's, it's, it's gone into the fire. There's, there's a heating process. So it's actually making this bread. It's making this wine. So Jesus is taking that. He's taking the gifts, the work of our hands, right? Of creation. He's taking this creation. And up at this altar, the Holy Spirit is actually coming down and is transforming the bread and the wine into the very body and blood the soul and divinity. God is pouring out his own divine life into these elements, these, this bread and this wine. So he's transforming it. The, the grains of wheat, the grapes, have been transformed into bread and to wine. And the bread and the wine is being transformed into the very presence of Christ himself. Right? And so this, there's, there's an engagement, there's a transformation that's that's happening within that, and there's a transformation and process happening within us because God wants us to become what we have consumed. So in a sense, like that yeast is, is consuming, it's eating, it's being fed, right? By the sugar, by the bread, by the water, right? The grapes, right? It's being fed and it's being transformed. That's happening with us too. So Jesus in the scriptures today, he's speaking about the word. He says, these are the words I have spoken to you, right? It's not just words that's being spoken. God's just not sharing information. That's not the point of it. It's, it's not just for our, our head. It's not information, these words. This is the living word. The living word. We are being transformed into the living word. We are being consumed by God himself. So much so that as we are participating, that as we are allowing this transformation process to happen, right? I'm sure with bread and if you're making your whiskey or if wine, right, you could interrupt the process. You could prevent it from actually engage in it and actually happening but if you allow that process to continue it doesn't take much you just give it a little bit of space you allow it to happen you give it freedom allow that process to happen and it's going to do what it does it's going to transform it if we give God a little bit of space in our own lives he is going to once that that yeast, once that little starter has been activated, that starter, that divine life is activated within us, it starts to consume us. St. Paul says, it's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives within me. Now, this doesn't mean that we, be, that we are God, 
No, there's, there's still the divine Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's the divine Holy Trinity. But we are participating in that very life of God. God is giving us the opportunity to participate, to come up into participation with his life. So what does that mean for each of us? Right? What does that, that's a, that's, this is an open question. There's no answers. What does that mean for us? What does that mean for you? That if you are participating in the life of God, how is your life different? If the words that we have heard in this Mass, from the Scripture, from this Gospel, those words are not just words, but the Gospel is not just a word, but it's the power. It's the power of the Gospel. It's living and it's true. If this is real, when we receive the Eucharist, when we receive Holy Communion, how are our lives different? What has changed within our lives? I, I don't know. It's open. Because otherwise, if all we're receiving is just bread and wine, then it's just more of my own life. I'm just taking bread and I'm taking wine and I'm letting it become part of me. And it's my own life that I'm living. But how am I allowing God to change me to impact my life, to transform my life so that I am becoming, that I am participating in the life of God? This is open. Anybody want to share? It might be too much for us right now. I don't know. I heard it. Where did it come from? Okay, I'll give you the microphone. So what does this mean? How do our lives... Walking in peace. What does that mean? Having God's peace with you. Being able to uh, live your life without resentment. Learning from Him. Reaching out to Him daily. Speaking to Him. Like having a cup of coffee with Him daily. And start out your day that way it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I love what you said. Living our life without, did you guys catch that one? Without what? Resentment. That's crazy. Because I've got a lot of resentments. I think all of us, there's a lot of things that we could resent, a lot of people we could resent, a lot of situations that we could resent. There's lots of reasons to have resentment. And you're saying that if we actually allow God and his love to come within, then he starts to transform us and we live our life without resentment. We, we live our life with peace and forgiveness. Wow. Wow. Anybody else? What might our lives look like if we actually allow this little starter, this little yeast of Christ, his own life, his own love, to actually start to move into our lives. What might our lives look like? Um, after receiving uh, the bread and wine, um, I honestly personally feel that, that Jesus is like uh, illuminating my body and, and, and giving me peace. Uh, so that I can, um, I can react better uh, among uh, other peoples, and, uh, and to be a better child. Uh, and so, so, uh, so he could like uh, bless my mouth and my words. Uh, so that I could um, s give a right answer, an appropriate right answer to, to other people. That's great. Thank you. So he, the, the spirit, the power, the life, the love of God is illuminating you. And so then it's not even your own words that are coming out of your mouth. It's, it's Christ who's speaking through you. 
anybody else. What might our lives look like? What do our lives look like if we are participating in the life of Christ? Maybe it's just something for us to think about. Just to be open to. How are our lives different? Because if they're not different, if we haven't been transformed, then what are we doing? Why are we here? Right? We're just living our lives. Are we here feeding ourselves and our own ego and our own agendas and our own ideas for ourselves and the world? Or are we actually allowing that transformation to happen? Sometimes that could be scary. Sometimes we start to lose ourselves. We lose our ambition, we lose our resentments, we lose, you know, what we're counting. Who's ahead? Who's behind? Who's better? Who's worse? Who's more important? Who's got the gold star? We start to lose that. We start to gain Christ. We gain his love. We gain eternal life. Now I invite those to receive their first Holy Communion to come forward, please. My brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we walk with him in newness of life. And so these candles are reminding you, they're reminding all of us of that new life that you, that we have received in our baptism. When we went into the water, the baptismal waters, we died to ourselves, to our old way of being, to those resentments, to all of those sins of ours. And when we rose from the water, we rose in the life of Christ, in the mind of Christ, with his thoughts, with his ideas, with his desires. And so I now ask you, and I invite us all to please stand.
Let us renew the promises of our holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. And now to uh, continue with this renewal of our baptismal promises, we'll have a sprinkling rite. the disciples at Emmaus, we have listened to God's word and he opened our minds. With confidence, we approach God for the needs of our community. For the church, that the spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders and civil authorities, may the gift of peace be every present among us through their role as peacemakers in the world, in the families and in the communities, we pray. For our neophytes, those newly joined to Christ through baptism, those called to him through the sacraments of initiation, may their witness of new life in God Bring fresh enthusiasm and joy to every Christian. 
we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper understanding of Christ's presence among us, may we who gather in his name learn to acknowledge his presence in one another, giving us strength to live as he commanded, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are broken and wounded, that they may find healing in Christ and that God will help us recognize them as our brothers and sisters through the wounded Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound and for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, including Dan Young, Brian Sullivan, John Paul Huang, Maria Huang, Amelia Katzen, Serna and Gadia family, that the risen Lord may dispel their darkness. For those gone before us in death, including J.B. Yap, Ana de la Ripa Bustos, and Larni Unto, that they and all sleep in Christ may enjoy light, happiness, and peace, we pray. For the intentions of this Mass, for the souls of Carlos Santiago and Rosario de Leon, for the special intention of Melody, Melody Tang Lao, for our own needs and intentions that we now recall in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, God of the promises, our hearts are burning within us, for we have heard your word. Help us to be faithful in hope and love and prepare us now to offer this sacrifice and to receive the bread of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our song for the presentation today is You Alone.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with dear Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John Eudes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, the living bread from heaven. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And tonight we will have our first communicants receive Holy Communion first, and then we will proceed as we normally would uh, for the rest of the congregation. Thank you.
Please join in our communion song, Sweet Redeemer.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. We have just a few short announcements today. Uh, We had our blood drive this morning, so thank you to whoever, if anyone here participated in the blood drive. Uh, We do that quarterly, so in a few months we'll have another opportunity. Um, But we also have our Call to Renew weekend, so thank you everyone who has supported the Call to Renew campaign. We have reached 35% of our goal, which is phenomenal. Uh, So if you have any questions, uh, we do have a representative here. Thank you again for your support for that capital campaign. And then uh, finally, our English as a Second Language classes are continuing to be offered every Saturday. That's from 9 a.m. to noon in room AB of our hall. We do have three levels of proficiency taught, and the only cost is the textbook, and the price of which is generously subsidized by our St. John Eudes Men's Council. All are welcome. I just want to give a special thank you to our AV team, uh, to our, our lectors, Eucharistic ministers, ushers, our captains, everyone who helped make today possible. Thank you to our choir. Let's give everybody a round of applause. Thank you. And in a special way, uh, we congratulate uh, those members who have received Jesus uh, in Holy Communion for the first time. Let's give them another round of applause. So you've received your first Holy Communion today. I'm going to invite you, and I'm going to invite all of us uh, to receive our first Holy Communion again. So the next time you can come to Mass, you can receive your first Holy Communion that day. Okay? So the next time you go to Mass, it's your first Holy Communion at that Mass. Okay? And so we've received this starter. God is giving us His own life. That starter, that yeast, that life is within us. So we, we can allow it to be activated, to live within us, to transform us, to consume us, to let that, like the bread rises, let the life of Christ rise within us. And we ask our Blessed Mother Mary, she, you know, I, I would imagine she helped Jesus to bake bread at home. They probably baked bread together. They made bread. So we ask our Blessed Mother Mary to help Christ rise within us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed art thou among women, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And our song of sending forth this evening is Go Make a Difference. Jesus. Jesus.